Okay, let's try vlogging with the 135 today. <laughs> oh gosh, too close, too close. Cut it now, cut it now. Oh jeez, that's horrifying. Today we're taking a look at Sony's Bokeh-S lens and Sigma's Bokeh-S lens. Neither of those statements are probably true, but you guys want to see a comparison between these two lenses, so here we are today. Today's helpful comparison video is made possible through the support from our friends over at Squarespace. To help me out with today's video, we put the new 135G Master in the hands of Scott Robert Lim, who is our friend that also happens to be a Sony artisan of imagery and an award-winning international photographer. While I, <laughs> Mr. 100K subs on YouTube now, shot side by side with him with the Sigma Art 135. Anyways, enough flexing. Both of us were shooting with the 42 megapixel Sony A7R3s, and the photos coming straight out of both 135s are incredible. The eyes are looking tack sharp, the bokeh blur looks absolutely buttery, which is no surprise because both of these lenses are rated to be some of the sharpest telephoto prime lenses out there, and we're seeing it from these photos. Closing in on some of these shots, we see a lot of rich details. The reflection of the model's eyes, the fur coat that they were wearing, and other details that can, well, make some other people jealous. Pulling some of these photos up side by side, I really just can't tell the images apart, aside from the slight color difference rendered by the lenses. One thing I will have to say though is the G Master does handle corner to corner sharpness a bit better. Now looking over the bokeh balls really quickly, because I got a lot of comments regarding the cat eyed shaped bokeh at 1.8, unfortunately the Sigma yields similar results in that regard as well, but the balls start to round out at 2.8 on both lenses. So with the image quality being nearly identical between the two 135s, the real test now lies in the performance. Is the G Master worth $600 more? Let's find out. Starting off with a high speed burst test on the Sony a7 III, we got the G Master nailing every single shot. The focus just snaps onto my face and kept tracking accurately as I moved closer and closer to the camera. On the other hand, using the same settings, the Sigma took a second longer to acquire focus on my face, but after it snapped on, it did a decent job tracking me. However, we did have a few missed focus shots from this batch. All in all, not too shabby. If we're shooting a static subject in an area with plenty of lights, both lenses will grab focus quite fast. As you can see here, face focus was hitting me right away and as we pan to the palm trees and buildings, the focus quickly shifts without any sort of hunting. Even in low light, both lenses acquire focus around the same speed. Moving on to video autofocus, no surprise here as we've tested a bunch of Sigma art lenses in the past, the Sigma reacts to achieve focus faster. This is with both Sony a7s sharing the same exact autofocus areas and settings, speed at normal and sensitivity at responsive with face detection turned on. However, the focus pole is way smoother on the G Master, the Sigma lenses tend to stutter when it rack focuses, whereas the Sony lenses tend to do a more gradual shift in focus. As I walk away and towards the camera, the G Master kept me in focus far better than the Sigma did. So performance wise, Sony G Master takes the cake. No surprises here. Taking a look at the physical differences between these two lenses, both 135s will make the entire camera setup front heavy. Even though the Sony is shorter and about half a pound lighter, it only makes holding the setup a little less straining compared to the Sigma 135. Now I've mentioned this before in my other videos, I much prefer using the Zeiss Bodice 135 just because it's a much lighter lens and it feels a lot more bounce on the Sony cameras, albeit having to sacrifice a few stops of light. In terms of user experience, the Sony has an aperture ring with an option for click and declick, an autofocus manual focus toggle, a focus limiter, and two focus hold buttons that can be reprogrammed on your Sony cameras. These two buttons are placed optimally for vertical and horizontal shooting. The Sigma only has an autofocus manual focus toggle and a focus limiter. Speaking of which, the G Master has a slight edge and minimum focusing distance. 
Even though the 135G Master, like most other Sony lenses, are fly-by-wire focus, it has the best manual focus control I've tested. As I'm slowly rotating the focus ring, it feels a lot more responsive compared to what I'm used to in the past. However, the Sigma still has the best manual focus control overall, as I felt I had a lot more control as I'm pulling focus. Plus, the focus distance meter on the top is extremely helpful pulling from point A to point B. With the image quality being so similar, it really comes down to performance and price when deciding between these two lenses. Overall, for the best hybrid performance if you're doing a lot of photo and video work, the 135G Master is definitely worth $600 more. Especially if you're shooting sports, weddings, events, situations where it requires you to have critical focus, the 135G Master has that reliability in the autofocus department. But if you're just shooting photos like portraits, family portraits, fashion, still life, situations where not a lot of movements are involved, then the Sigma Art 135 will give you the best bang for your buck for that image quality if you don't mind that extra weight. Again, both lenses are spectacular. It would just depend on your needs. Let me know in the comments down below. What do you shoot more with and which 135 are you going to go with? Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace! If you're in Southern California and you're looking to up your portrait game, lighting game, posing game, or even editing game, consider joining award-winning international photographer, Sony Artisan Scott Robert Lim's mentoring program. Yes, we'd love to have you. We meet in the Los Angeles area. Um, every month we're doing something. One month uh, we might be doing a lecture, and then the next month we go out on a shoot, kind of like what we're doing now. We got some models, we got furs, we got styling, we got it all. And uh, we're really here to create a great community for you to learn, to get better, to get inspired, and all that good stuff. So, love to see you. Thank you for letting us photobomb your uh... <laughs> <Got> shoot. <it. laughs> Had a great time. And just a reminder, Vivi and I will be in Japan all of April as part of our initiative to brand ourselves as traveling hybrid shooters. We will be populating those photos and videos on our website hosted on Squarespace. With Squarespace, we're able to rebuild our website with their clean templates. Everything's as simple as click and drag. Definitely check back in the next month to see our progress. However, you can try out Squarespace for yourself right now with a free trial. Whether you're building a portfolio or setting up an online shop, Squarespace is an all-in-one solution for you. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash jasonvong to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. You're welcome. See you guys in the next end card. Peace.